Father, we thank you for this hour, for this moment. Thank you for your children. And thank you for the ministers who are singing to us. We thank you, Lord, because we've sent the power already. And we pray that everyone will, have a, will be partakers of that power in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, the power that will turn everything around for everybody. That will break every yoke. Destroy every work of the devil. And make all conquerors over sin, over Satan, over circumstances, over every situation. Grant unto us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that no work of the devil will remain here. No curse of the enemy will remain here. And there is no weakness that will remain here. Send the power. Lord, send the power. Upon your children, send the power. And we pray, Lord, that you roll every negative thing away in Jesus' name. Those who are looking for admission, oh Lord, I just pray that you open the way. And you break every closed door in Jesus' name. And those who are about taking their final exams, oh Lord, I just pray that success. Flying success to grant unto them in Jesus' name. Provision of money for those who are poor. For those whose prayers are just living from hands to mouth, they are wondering, where will this come? Where will that come from? I just pray you'll open the windows of heaven. And I pray that every need will be met in Jesus' name. All sicknesses that will hinder the progress of any child here, Lord, I bind that sickness. I destroy that sickness. Send your power, break every yoke in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And every successful, victorious child said, Amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at uh, the gospel today. We're talking about the great power of the gospel. The great power of the gospel. Many people do not know when they hear the gospel that the gospel is good news. And it is the good news of the power of God coming upon your life. And that power is here tonight in Jesus' name. If you look at a very familiar verse of scripture, it's um, John chapter 3 verse 16. And you have, the, you have the gospel right there. We're looking at John chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 16 here. In John chapter 3 verse 16, I, I even want to tell you to say that without even opening your Bible or without uh, looking at the Bible. Can you read it without uh, opening your Bible? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now I want you to open to John chapter 3. You've read it. We're going to look at it very well. John chapter 3. We're looking at a verse um, 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. And I want you to write the word gospel. The word gospel. And that means G-O-S-P-E-L. Gospel. Write it vertically. And then as I read uh, this verse, I want you to do something. When I come across any word that begins with a G, you write it there, that O, you write it S, you write it there, and P, you write, and E and L, you write. Are you ready? For God, write God there. Then keep on writing. So Lord, the world on that same line, that he gave his only, then you write that only with that letter O, just under G. Only begotten son, that's S. You put son there, that's S. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that's the P there. But have everlasting, that's the E there. Life, L. Do you see the gospel there? This is the gospel. What's the gospel? The gospel is the news of God's love. That God so loved the whole world. Loves you, loves me, loves your brother, loves your sister, loves every one of us that he gave. And he's given his only begotten son just for you because you are part of that world. And it's so that you will not perish. You will not perish. You will have everlasting life, eternal life. You will have that life in Jesus' name. 
And that's the gospel we're talking about today. When that gospel comes in our heart, comes in our mind, comes in our soul, comes in our spirit, and we receive the gospel, we believe the gospel, we accept the gospel, it works wonders in our lives. Those who have not heard the gospel, they are missing a lot. Those who have not received the gospel, they are missing a lot. Those who have not believed the gospel, the good news that God so loved them, he has given his only begotten son. And so that as you believe, as you receive, as you accept and say, Jesus is mine. He is my savior. He is my Lord. He is my substitute. He gave himself for me. He died for me. As you believe that in your heart, you confess it in your mouth. Then it says you have everlasting life, eternal life. A life that is abundant now, a life that's exciting now, a life that is happy now, a life that is righteous and holy now, a life that is new. And then when you leave this world, eventually either through rapture or through the other way, you'll go to heaven in Jesus' name. We're looking at Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now you understand the gospel. It is the gospel of Christ. Christ came to give us the good news. Christ came to demonstrate the good news. Every time he forgave somebody's sin, he was demonstrating good news. Every time he healed the sick, he demonstrated good news. Every time he cast out devils, he demonstrated good news. And so it says, it is the gospel of Christ. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? I'm not afraid of salvation. I'm not afraid of healing. I'm not ashamed of deliverance. I'm not ashamed of the good news of the Lord. And then he goes on to say, for it is the power of God. You see that? the gospel, the good news when it enters into us it is the power of God unto salvation unto everyone that believeth are there believers in the house tonight? everyone that believeth that power will work in your life in Jesus name then it says to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles as I told you we are talking about the great power of the gospel the great power of the gospel. You could say the great power of good news. The good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are three things we're going to quickly consider. Number one, the saving power of the gospel. The saving power of the gospel. The gospel actually saves. It saves. When I say save, what does that mean? Many people do not understand. Well, are you saved? They say, are you saved? Am I not saved? You don't understand. What does that mean? Are you saved? To be saved means to be rescued. It's like a child fell into a well and then was crying for help. Help, I'm drowning here. Help, I'm dying here. And then somebody reaches down the hand and pulls him and says, Thank God, praise the Lord, I am saved. That is, I was saved from death. I was saved from perishing. I am now rescued. And that's the salvation of the Lord. And when the hand of the Almighty God reaches down to you in the well of sin, in the pit of sin, and he rescues you, and he pulls you out, and then he washes all the sins away from your body, and from your language, and from your heart, and everything becomes clean. We say, praise the Lord. I am, tell me, saved. The saving power of the gospel. Point number two, the sustaining power of his grace. There are some people, they say, I'm saved, I'm saved. They're not sustained. They do not remain saved. They come in, they go out. They crawl in, they crawl out. It, it's like they experience something, the joy of the Lord, just for a moment. And then after that, they are gone. You don't find them anymore. But he sustains us in his grace. There is the sustaining power of his grace. Number three, the supernatural power of God. And thank God that power is here tonight. I said that power is here tonight. That is the power that created the whole universe. Think about that. That created the sun and the moon and the stars and then our earth. And those of us who have studied science, all those things they call the planets and all the everything. He created everything. That supernatural power will recreate your life. 
anything that is dead in that body of yours, the power of God will quicken you and make you alive in Jesus' name. Any part that is not functioning, brain is not functioning, eye is not functioning tonight, that eye will function. And the deaf ears will hear. And those who say, well, is this a polio? Is this a, you know, stroke or whatever? I send the power of God into that place today. And then you come alive and jump and walk in Jesus' name. Any kind of weakness in your body, any kind of sickness, tonight that thing is going. The supernatural power of God. Tell me number one. The saving power. The saving power because tell me number two. The sustaining power of his grace. Number three now. You got it. You are going to experience it. We're, look, we're looking at number one. The saving power of the gospel. The saving power of the gospel. What do we do with the gospel? How, how does the gospel actually save us? What does, how does the gospel come into our lives? That is the good news. Remember, every time you hear the gospel, either you go to John chapter 3, verse 6, so, okay, that is the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, and I'm that whosoever, believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's the gospel. Every time you hear the gospel, the gospel that is the gospel. And that gospel saves. How do we know that? Look at this in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 14. Mark chapter 1 verse 14. It says in Mark 1 verse 14 it says now after that John was put in prison Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel preaching the good news of the kingdom of the kingdom of God saying the time is fulfilled your time has come. I said your time has come no more delay for you no more hindrance on your way the door is open in Jesus' name. It says, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. You see that? You see that? That is how the power of the, gospel, of the good news begins to work in our lives. Repent ye. That means turn around. Turn around. We've been going the way of uh, perishing, the way of damnation, the way of evil, the way of the world, and the way of damnation, the way that will bring us to eternal judgment. And it says, turn around. Turn around. That way you are following is the way of sin, and the way of sin is the way of suffering. The way of the transgressor is hard. And so you turn and repent ye and then believe the gospel. Believe that the good news is yours. Believe that the moment you say, I trust in Christ, I believe in Christ, and I put my whole life, my soul, my past, my present, my future, I put everything in the hands of Christ, and I will not go to idol, go to occultism or any other thing, but I'm going to trust in him. Salvation comes immediately. Give me a good amen there. Yes. In Mark, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And I pray that this gospel tonight will be yours. It will be your heart, your mind, your soul. It will be your body. And the goodness of the gospel will walk in your life in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 16, I'm looking at verse 15. It says in verse 15, it's, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach. Tell me. And preach what? The gospel to who? It belongs to you. Every creature. Good news belongs to you. When this good news comes to your life, it will cancel every bad news in your life in Jesus' name. Good news. Good news for your soul. Good news for your spirit. That it will forgive your sin. It will change your life. It will turn everything around. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And as you have that gospel today, I pray that the goodness of God will walk in your life. The grace of God will walk in your life. All the provisions of the gospel will be abundant in your life in Jesus' name. Now we come to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, that wonderful passage. John chapter 3 verse 14 all through to verse 16 now. Chapter, chapter 3 verse 14. It says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... 
as Moses lifted up this, the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Let me just, uh, you know, recite the story for you. The children of Israel were going from Egypt and they were going to Canaan. They were going to the promised land. I will get to the promised land. I said, I will get to the promised land. But you see, they were passing through the wilderness to get to the promised land. And then they got tired. We sometimes get tired. And sometimes they will get weary, will get discouraged. And then they began to speak against God and against Moses. And then serpents came, snakes came everywhere, biting them, and they were dying. Then they went to Moses and they repented. As they repented, they said, we're sorry for what you have done. That's all God requires. He doesn't expect that, you know, roll on the ground, beat yourself, crack your head. You're sorry. And that, that's, that's what God wants. That's repent ye and believe the gospel. Then the Lord said, all right, tell them that, the serpent I hang on, you hang on the pole there. Whosoever, anybody, child, boy, girl, adult, grandma, grandpa, anybody that looks at that thing will live. And Jesus said that as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, this world is a wilderness. If somebody doesn't have God, this is a wilderness. No water. No happiness, no joy, no provision, no manna, nothing. There's no shop to buy. Any. It's a wilderness. There's no joy anywhere. Every, everybody is just you know, trying their best and they have nothing. But when Jesus comes into your life, he'll take you out of that wilderness. He'll take you to the promised land. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody there today? I said, am I talking to somebody there today? You will not remain in the wilderness in Jesus' name. Yeah. All the scarcity of the wilderness will not touch your life. All the sicknesses of the wilderness will not touch your life. As you look unto Jesus, as Moses lifted up that serpent on the, in the wilderness, whosoever, then look at the next verse there, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's then, you know, brings in the camp story. That's the gospel. And it says, for God so loved me in the world that he gave his only begotten son, that me as I believe, whosoever believeth will not perish, will not perish, will not perish. I know I will not perish. I believe in Jesus, I will not perish. I trust in Christ, I will not perish. I've given my soul to Christ, I will not perish. Salvation is mine, I will not perish. Make it yours, it is yours in Jesus' name. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that you know you give your life to Christ, if you've not done it before, tonight is your night, you give your life to Jesus Christ, everything will turn around your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the sustaining power of his grace. The sustaining power of his grace. There's something we call grace. And that grace, you know, there are even some, you know, some of our young sisters, their name is Grace, and if I ask them, your name is Grace. What does that mean? I said, it's Grace. I said, but what, tell me what it means. I said, I said, sir, that is Grace. Okay, I'm going to tell you now. Do you want to know what Grace is? You know, this G-R-A-C-E is God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. That means... How rich is Christ? Oh, he's so rich, I cannot mention how rich he is. He's rich in mercy. He's rich in salvation. He's rich in power. He's rich in healing. He's rich in deliverance. He's rich in provision. He's rich in everything. And that is grace. God's riches, the riches of God at Christ's expense is paid for it. All he wants me to do is just, just line up and he says, what do you want? I want grace. What do you mean by grace? I want God's riches because Christ has paid for it at Christ's expense. It is God's righteousness at Christ's expense. I want righteousness. How do you get that? Christ paid for it. And because he paid for it, I stretch out my hand of faith and I'm going to have that grace. And I say, grace is God's redemption at Christ's expense. You see, redemption is when somebody has been a slave in the slave market 
And then somebody very rich said, I don't want that boy to be a slave, to be, I don't want that girl to be a slave. And then he pays for that child and then gets him out and there's no oppression, there's no torment in your life anymore. That is God's redemption at Christ's expense. What's grace? It's God's revelation at Christ's expense. There are some things you'll never know until grace comes to your life. You may study all the English, all the literature, all the mathematics, all the chemistry. There are some things. You can study chemistry from here till the top of the tree without knowing anything about heaven, without knowing anything about righteousness, about the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. But it is when this grace comes into your life, thank God for God's grace. I said, thank God for God's grace. And that grace is overflowing. It's going to flow into your life today in Jesus' name. God's revelation at Christ's expense. Remember that. And now, now, when we pray, God answers by grace. You know, some people, when they pray, they say, I'm trying to feel good so that God will answer my prayer. Do you know what grace means? God, uh, this, this means uh, God responds abundantly, completely, exceedingly. When we pray, grace means that God responds abundantly, completely, and exceedingly. I can tell you it's going to answer your prayer tonight. And it is all by, tell me, all by, tell me again, all by grace. We're looking at uh, the word of God. We're looking at Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11, the grace, the, the grace of God, the grace of God. Titus chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It says, um, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation as a peer unto, tell me, Tell me out loud. Tell me as if you were really sure. It's appeared to all men. You see, there are some people they say, I don't know whether grace is available for me. I don't know whether the righteousness of Christ is available for me. I don't know whether the riches of Christ is available for me. It has appeared unto all men. It is just today. I said it is just today. And then it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly. Is that grace of God that helps us to live soberly and to live righteously? And then it says, and godly, when, when we get to heaven, where? Tell me if you are sure. Read it out loud if you are very sure. In this present world, you know, sometimes you meet uh, some, uh, some of these young people in your school and uh, you want to witness to them. You want to tell about Jesus, your Savior, about Jesus, the Lord. Who do you say? I'm, I'm also born again. Ah, you born again. I didn't know that. Because uh, how about, you know, you live like ordinary people. You live like you did. I didn't even know you were going to any church at all. I didn't know you ever read the Bible in your life. Oh, he says, yes, uh, you know, but you know, we're still in the world and nobody can live godly and righteously and soberly in this world. Yeah, that person has never read this verse. It thinks that it's when they get to heaven, then they will not steal anymore. When they get to heaven, then they will not commit fornication anymore. But look at this, says the grace of God that brings salvation. When that grace comes, it's bring, it says, who wants salvation? Who wants salvation? Then you say, I'm here, I'm here. And that grace comes to you and it brings salvation to you. And it's teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Wonderful. He gave himself for you. Say, he gave himself for me. And somebody is not talking there, say that again. Anybody sleeping there, wake them up. Tell me. Wonderful, wonderful. Salvation is yours. Eternal life is yours. The grace of God is yours in Jesus' name. 
and go tell everybody else he gave himself for them too. But they don't know. And because they don't know, they are walking in ignorance. Thank God, ignorance is away from your life. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our, of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from how many iniquities? All iniquity. And then what will he do? Purify unto himself a, an ordinary person, a common fellow, a non-entity, a dick and Harry. No, you are special. I said you are special. You know, they say, why do you behave in this peculiar way? Thank you for telling me it's because I'm a peculiar person. Any peculiar person there, you are peculiar. That's why Satan cannot touch you. He can touch all those ordinary people, common people, but he dare not touch you. That's why those demons cannot touch you. I said they cannot touch you. In your sleep, in your day or night, you are peculiar, you are special to the Lord in Jesus' name. That he might purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. Zealous of good work. Some people tell me they are saved. And then we're giving opportunity among uh, the young people now that, you know, we can help in the house fellowship. We can help in this area, this area. And they're still lethargic and lazy and lukewarm and they don't know where they can do that. And when grace comes to us, grace will wake you up. I said grace will wake you up. You want to preach, you want to pray, you want to sing, you want to walk, you want to do something for the Lord because it makes us zealous unto good works. I pray that that zeal will come upon your life. Uh, saturate your brain and your mind and you will serve the Lord with all your energy in Jesus' name. That's the grace of God and that grace will never dry up in your life. I'm looking at Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, we're looking at verse, tell me, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, for by grace are you saved. You see that it's not, I'm trying to get saved. No, why are you trying? Already Jesus paid for your salvation. I'm crying to get saved. Why are you crying? Jesus already provided your salvation. By grace are you saved. Remember grace again, that grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. It's paid for it. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. It's God's redemption at Christ's expense. It's God's revelation at Christ's expense. And when you pray, God responds abundantly, completely, and exceedingly. Thank God it is for you tonight. And it says, by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith. And it says, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God, which God has before ordained that we shall walk in them. We keep on walking in righteousness, walking in the goodness of God because of the grace of God. How much grace can you have? How much grace available for you? Uh, let me show you. Hebrews chapter 4. All the grace you need is available tonight. I said all the grace you need is available tonight. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 14. And then we'll read on to verse 16. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Verse 14. Seeing then that we have not that we may have or we're going to have, we already have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. If you have believed that Jesus is your Savior and you have professed that and hold on to that, don't allow anybody to confuse you or to beat you out of your profession, confession. For we have, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of infirmities. Even when you are weak, the Lord is with you. I said, when you are weak, the Lord is with you. You know, some people, some people think that when I'm strong, Christ is with me. When I'm happy, Christ is with me. But when I'm weak, then he's no more with me. No, by grace. It's by grace he's with you. He's with you when you're sick. 
It's with you when you are discouraged. It's with you when you are unhappy. It's with you when you are sad. It's with you when you don't have any strength. When it appears, huh, where you stand, Christ is with you. He says, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. He'll be with you till the end in Jesus' name. He says, he has the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like us. We are yet without sin. Look at verse 16. Let us therefore, because it's there for us every time, because he loves us every time, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You'll find grace to help in the time of need. At home, grace. In church, grace. At school, grace. On the bus, grace. Everywhere you go, just breathe your little prayer to God. Grace will flow down to your life in Jesus' name. Point number three. Tell me number three now. Tell me out loud in unison. The supernatural power of God. Wonderful. This is where you are coming. God sent the power already. And he sent you to roll away all the mountains of your life. And it is done in Jesus' name. Everybody say power. power. Let me hear you. Power. It has come down. We're looking at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 verse 43. Luke chapter 9 verse 43. There are people that do not know that God has power. But thank God, I know God has power. And with God, all things are possible. In your life, all things are possible. That thing that looks difficult to you, God is going to make it simple and is going to roll those problems away tonight in Jesus' name. Every miracle, listen to this, every miracle that the adults have received is available for you. Every miracle you have heard testimony about that, all the testimony we have been given here, that any other teenager, any other child like you that has received all those miracles tonight, your name is written on it in Jesus' name. Because God is no respecter of persons. He's not a partial God. What is done for A, He will do for B. And you know, all those testimonies you heard from January till this time, and you are wondering, how did she have that? How could he have that? Well, it's now your turn, and you are going to have it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at this. Luke chapter 9, verse 43. It says, and they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. They were all amazed and surprised at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, everyone, at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, let these sins sink down into your ears. Let this thing sink down deep into your heart. You see, all that you have heard, that you open the eyes of the blind, let that sink in. He opened the ears of the deaf, let that sink in. He delivered that epileptic boy, let that sink in. Ah, he did that for that boy, let it sink into you, he's going to do it for me. That fellow that you could not pass any exam until he called upon Jesus and now he's passing every exam. He was almost the last every time in the class, but now he's in the forefront, his head and his no more tail, let that sink deep into your heart. The fellow that said I got this guy, I didn't even know I would get admission, but all of a sudden I just, I said, God remember me, and the Lord remembered him, and he's now giving testimony let it sink down deep into her, because once it sinks in, you say, ah, uh -uh. What am I doing in poverty? What am I doing in need of scarcity? What am I doing in sickness? This thing is sinking down into me. My time has come. Your time has come. Yeah. I said your time has come. Yeah. Because the power of God is going to work in your life. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And I'm reading now from verse from verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Here it says in verse 37, verse 37, it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Tell me again. 
he will do it in your life. And then in First Peter chapter one, First Peter chapter one, I hope you're opening your Bible. I said, opening your Bible. I wish I could just come to you there and sit by your side and see you opening the Bible. I just love that. In First Peter chapter one, I'm looking at verse three, at verse three, and then I'm going to read all through to verse five. First Peter chapter one, from verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, are, uh, which according to His abundant mercy, abundant mercy, you can never exhaust the mercy of God. Is so abundant and that mercy is just tonight. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible. You have an inheritance tonight. I said you have an inheritance tonight. You are going to claim it in Jesus' name. Undeserved, on, 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 undefiled, and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Part of the inheritance is there, and then the greater part of that inheritance is in heaven, and it is yours. Who are kept by the power of God. The Lord will keep you. The power of God will keep you. He kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Babylon. He will keep you. He kept Daniel in that same Babylon. He will keep you. And he kept Joseph, that you know, young man. He kept him in uh, the house of Potiphar and in the prison. Then brought him to the throne eventually. I see you on the throne already. And you'll be the head. You'll not be the tail in Jesus' name. Because we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. The revelation of the grace of God, of the salvation of God, of the provision of God, everything you need, that revelation is here tonight. If you ask, you will do it. Ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Listen to this. Everyone, everyone, are you excluded? Everyone, are you there? Everyone, are you part of this? Everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. He that seeketh, findeth. And then it says, ask, it is yours. Are you ready to ask? I said, are you ready to ask? Why don't you just stand up then and say, my time has come. My time has come. My time has come. Remember the gospel. Remember the gospel. Remember the gospel. Remember the gospel. The gospel is good news. You don't have to be lost. Remember the gospel is the good news. You don't have to be lost. He will give you that good news right now. And then as you repent and turn away from your sin and just turn your back on all your evils. Say, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus paid the whole price for me to be saved. That salvation is right there now. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Any sin in your life, sin brings death, brings damnation. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But don't despair. The gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. If you will believe in your heart that Jesus died for you, and was raised from the dead, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is my Savior, that salvation will be yours immediately right now. He saves. He rescues from sin. He delivers. He forgives. What a great God we have. And it's all by grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's redemption at Christ's expense. You can be saved right now. I'll give you opportunity. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. You can do better than that. Amen. Now, praise the Lord. Yes, but nice good. This is a solemn moment now. You know, it just says, everyone that looketh on Jesus by faith on the cross, get saved. All the sins you ever committed in your life, big, small, great, whatever, they are forgiven immediately. Heads bowed and eyes closed in your own heart. Believe. Let this sink down deep into your heart that Jesus died for you. And that you took all your sins away. And as you put your trust and faith and confidence in him right now, 
All your sins are forgiven. It's not what you feel. It is what the Lord has revealed. And it is so. Raise up your hand if you want that salvation. want me to pray with you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. You want that salvation. And then it will come with a change of heart. Change of heart. Thank you. God bless you. Raise it up very well. We're going to pray now. Just pray after me and, you know, if you have been saved before but you are wondering what happened, what did not happen, you can repeat with us too. In Jesus' name. Are we ready to repeat what I say? I said, are we ready? Father, I want to hear you. Father, I come to you. I know Jesus died for me. Even me. He died for me. To take all my sins away. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me so much to die for me. Lord, by your grace, I turned away from my sin. Forgive me every bad thing I ever did. I accept your forgiveness. Lord, I pray you give me eternal life now. Give me your salvation now. I believe. I believe. I believe. I will not perish. I am saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name because you are a God of love. You'll never reject anyone, boy, girl, or even adult that comes to you. And I pray that those who have prayed that prayer sincerely, forgive them in Jesus' name. Let your salvation come into them. And the joy of salvation, and the victory of salvation, and the grace that comes with salvation, let it come to everyone in Jesus' name. Sustain them. Keep them. Make them to walk in righteousness by your support and sustaining power. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shout. Amen. Now, now, supernatural. Everybody say supernatural power. The supernatural power of God. Say that. Do it to walk in your life right now. Any kind of problem the devil brought in your life, I'm going to tell that devil, pack your load and go. He has to pack his load and he has to go. You are going to be free tonight. I said you'll be free tonight. Are you ready? Check up, check up. Any, any pain, any problem, any sickness, whatever, any weakness there, whatever, any deformity there, any blindness there, any deafness, whatever there, any brain damage there, whatever it is, this is the moment of the supernatural power. Are you ready? You raise up your hand. A miracle is coming your way. Power is coming your way. And then you lay your hand. If there's a real, real, real problem there, you lay your hand there. Something is happening right there now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because your power knows no limit. And therefore, I send your power on every boy, every girl here tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every problem in the head, every problem in the mind, roll it away in Jesus' name. Lord, any pain, any pain, definite pain there, oh Lord, I'm asking, take it away in Jesus' name. The pain inside that ear, I command the pain inside that ear, come out in Jesus' name. And that a fellow always speaking and speaking as if something is irritating your throat. I pray the Lord will touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. The, the one that goes to the toilet will be there. The toilet feeling pain and feeling pain and then your anus coming out. I pray that that pile be healed now in Jesus' name. You know, the, 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 the person there on my side that is shot an arrow against you in the dream. And since that time, the pain has been there. That arrow, I break that arrow. I destroy that arrow. Be healed in Jesus' name. That one that is always, you know, walking and was wumbling and falling down. Epilepsy, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. The noise you are hearing in your ears right there, that noise I silence you right now. And I command, be silent in Jesus' name. 
the one that went to the hospital, you know, recently, and they say that, you know, your spinal cord is weak, and that part is weak, and all that, and this one is curved, I pray that it will be straightened right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. All the skin disease and rashes and this, and I clear everything away right now. I pray the spring power of God will come into everyone right now. And failure, I cancel failure. I cancel failure. The promise that will be heard, you'll not be tail. Fulfillment is coming upon your life right now. Rise up and succeed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, all this bit of poverty, I don't have this, I don't have that. No help, no, no aid or whatever. Help from above. Help from heaven. Come your way in Jesus' name. The, the pain in your knees right there to stand up you're, you're, you're see a young person to stand up is, to, is a problem to sit down is a problem all that pain in your joints I command pain come out in Jesus name and any sickle cell sickle cell that you know you're anemic no blood and then you're always weak and this I pray the Lord will transform your blood will change your blood group and I pray Lord set them free and heal them in Jesus name Lord I pray that everyone right now from you know the front to the back from right to left everywhere touch them right now heal them right now miracle everywhere healing everywhere deliverance everywhere and I pray you confirm it in every life I thank you because I know you have answered in Jesus' name we pray. And I say, Amen. And you say, amen. Check up yourself. You say, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Praise the Lord. It is done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. God bless you.